Mmm, coffee. Who doesn't like coffee? Well, the short answer to that is I don't like coffee. At least that was true eight years ago. And a much more detailed answer would be that a big chunk of British people don't like coffee either. How do I know this? Because they drink it considerably less than their American counterparts. And there are certain reasons in the world that made this eventuality as inevitable as the ensuing comments from those American viewers who also don't drink coffee. Just to be clear, I am aware that neither country nor any country can claim that 100% of its people have been indoctrinated in the ways of coffee. But it still remains a fact that Americans are drinking coffee at a much higher rate than us Brits. And as somebody who's lived extensively in both countries, I barely need the stats to bear me out on this. In my early days of living here in the United States, it really stood out to me. It seemed like everyone from my in-laws to my co-workers derived their caffeine from coffee and occasionally Red Bull, but we don't talk about that. It quickly became evident that coffee was a tool for social purposes. Colleagues would routinely say things like, hey, let's touch base over coffee. And I didn't know whether or not the first part of that sentence involved learning the rules to baseball. So on both accounts, as a then non-coffee drinker, I usually said no, which I've come to realise is a decent way not to get promoted. It also became apparent to me that in the United States, it's socially acceptable to walk down the street with a to-go cup in your hands like you're on your way to paradise. In Britain, we didn't do this when I lived there. And these are by no means the only reasons that America's apparent obsession with coffee stood out. So what else? Do Brits just not drink coffee? Of course they do, and in fact, they've done so in increasing numbers since I left 13 years ago. With the increasing influence of Starbucks, Cafe Nero, and Costa Coffee, Britain has well and truly jumped on board the coffee chain train. And so since I've only been back once in those 13 years, this is just a hunch, but I suspect that some Brits now do this. All that said, the British still don't drink anywhere near as much coffee as Americans. So let's address the big grey elephant in the room, and I'm not referring to me. That elephant is tea. Although British tea consumption has been reportedly in decline, a 2016 study found that Britain, or in this case the entire United Kingdom, was still, at least per capita, the third highest consumer of tea in the world, behind the Republic of Ireland and Turkey. Just for the record, the United States was obviously way behind on this list, placing at 35th. So why does this matter? Couldn't Britain just enjoy tea and coffee? And the answer to that is not always. Just as some people are either a dog or a cat person, a fan of the Stones or the Beatles, or a supporter of rugby or football, some people are just decidedly a tea person or a coffee person, and there's no in-between. Of course, it would be interesting, and for me quite demoralising, to return to these upward and downward trends in about 10 years' time to see how dated this video has become. In the meantime, you might be thinking, Lawrence, the title of this video is Why Does America Drink More Coffee Than Britain? When so far, the burden of accountability seems not to be with the former, but the latte. latter. Well, the truth is, America was once in the same boat. In the 17th and 18th centuries, even though coffee houses were showing up in the Boston area and beyond, tea was very much the hot drink of choice among new settlers of the New World. In fact, coffee was largely seen as a drink of the well-to-do. And so I suppose there's a certain level of irony in the fact that the demise of tea in America was largely the result of protests against tea taxation imposed by the British well-to-do. Famously, this played out in the form of the Boston Tea Party, in which members of the Sons of Liberty hurled tea into Boston Harbour. Thereafter, amid cries of no taxation without representation, tea consumption in this new country became widely viewed as unpatriotic. And arguably, the biggest winner to emerge from all of this was coffee. Over the next century and a half, America's obsession with coffee grew to such an extent that by the early 1920s, the country consumed more than half of the world's coffee. This statistic was the direct result of what is known in the industry as the first wave of coffee. This had its roots in Gold Rush-era California, where San Francisco became a hotbed for coffee importation and roasting. And out of this emerged three giants of American coffee, Folgers, MJB, and Hills. And the key word here is giants, because two of the most notable things about coffee's first wave is that coffee was mass-produced and tasted like it. And this idea of coffee as a commodity in which Maxwell House and Folgers thrived grew exponentially in the first half of the 20th century. But then after World War II, in which Americans were forced to ration their coffee, 
the per capita rate of coffee consumption in the United States began to decrease. And surely that wasn't the coffee's fault. I mean, coffee beans were being imported at roughly the same rate as they were before the war. But one thing that did boom, of course, after World War II was America's population. And because of the growing influence of soft drinks on American life, some boomers were saying no to this coffee, which they insisted tasted bland. And then in the 1970s came coffee's second wave, which was led chiefly by the American giant Starbucks. And then a post-millennium third wave in which more attention is paid to the quality of the coffee. Now, of course, these waves were occurring on either side of the pond. <laughs> that was a joke about the Atlantic and waves. It was rubbish. But partly down to tea and the fact that the origin story of these waves was in the United States, America continues to consume more coffee than Britain. Here's the twist. Despite America's well-documented coffee culture, neither country, relatively speaking, are high consumers of coffee. Routinely ranked at the top of that list are the Nordic countries of Norway, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, and Iceland, where each person drinks 20 pounds or more of coffee every year. Figures that are more than double that of the United States. And given the fact that the US's neighbours to the north, Canada, also feature high on these lists suggest a relationship between coffee and cold weather. That that might well account for why the highest consuming state within the United States is Vermont. Then again, number two is Arizona, so it's not a perfect science. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below whether you're a tea or a coffee person, or neither. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at LostInThePondUS, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. And finally, a huge shout out to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lostinthepond. Until the next video, goodbye.